It's hard to believe that it's been well over 20 years since Toyota first introduced the Prius nameplate to America all the way back in 2001. Now, in that time frame, the Prius has gathered a lot of attention for being a practical, efficient, and dependable daily driver. However, some of the attributes that nobody ever called a Prius was sexy or even sophisticated. Well, for 2023, Toyota is looking to change all that with the all-new fifth generation Prius. I already had a chance to drive this vehicle out in Encinitas, California. California about six months ago. However, this week, Toyota has loaned me for a full week this 2023 Prius Limited front wheel drive painted in reservoir blue. We're gonna live with the Prius for a full week. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. And at the end of this video, we're gonna find out has Toyota managed to actually successfully create a sexy and even desirable Toyota Prius? Stay tuned to find out. Now, although the industry continues to move toward fully battery electric vehicles, Toyota decided to keep the new Prius a hybrid. Now, they do offer a plug-in hybrid. That is a separate review. This model here is the conventional hybrid, which Toyota offers with either front or all-wheel drive. Now, the Prius didn't just get a glow up in terms of the exterior styling. Toyota also added significantly more muscle under the hood, courtesy of a new larger two-liter Atkinson Cycle four-cylinder engine with double overhead cams. It is augmented by two electric motors at the front. A separate third electric motor adds all-wheel drive. If you guys go for all-wheel drive, the gas engine on its own delivers 150 horsepower and 139 pound-feet of torque. It is assisted by an electric motor that also delivers 111 horsepower and 152 pound-feet of torque. Combined output is 194 horsepower for the front drive model, around 196 if you guys go for all-wheel drive. That is a significant like 72 plus horsepower uh, versus the previous generation. So a big increase and the power. Uh, there's only one transmission choice. It's an eCVT, an electronic CVT. Front wheel drive is on my particular tester here, but you can get all wheel drive for $1,400. The fuel economy is rated at 52 in the city, 52 in the highway, and 52 combined. If you guys go for all wheel drive, it'll drop to around 49 in the city, 50 on the highway. Regular gas is recommended. This has an 11 and a half gallon fuel tank, and you're looking at roughly just under 600 miles of range between Phillips, which would put a lot of electric vehicles to shame. Toyota is also claiming a zero to 60 time of 7.2 seconds. That's a significant improvement of over three seconds versus the prior generation. We'll put it through our, or we've got our tip equipment. We'll see what we can actually get in the real world. And this vehicle, as it sits, weighs in at just over 3,200 pounds. The all-wheel drive version is around 100 pounds heavier. So let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling and how can you not notice the style of this vehicle? In my week's worth of testing, I have definitely had people giving this vehicle a thumbs up, a second look, even uh, Prius owners, current generation Prius owners, they look at this thing because it just has a much sleeker, sexier, sophisticated design. Toyota made this new Prius about an inch wider and about two inches lower. And you can really see that because it now has a low and wide appearance to it, especially when you look at it dead on from the front end. You can see all Priuses come standard with the company's uh, by dual LED headlights with a unique shape to the headlight where it has this C-shape LED daytime running light and turn signal. Uh, you have an LED projector low and high beam here. There's an LED accent light down here. No fog lights on the vehicle. And then you can see in terms of aerodynamics, the grill is slightly opened up open over here that allows for cooling to pass through. If there's one thing I don't like, it's this front license plate right here. You can see it's built into the bumper. I would have preferred Toyota just left this smooth and added a bracket. Like most other vehicles, you can see the front splitter here has some gray accents, some more uh, functional openings. There are some active grill shutters here. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the styling. I mean, even after seeing this vehicle, you know, out uh, for the last six months now, I still think it's a really attractive looking car. Now, moving around the side profile, this vehicle is built on their latest TNGA architecture. Toyota extended the wheelbase by about two inches at 108.3. Its overall length is just over 181 inches. It's about an inch and a half longer versus the prior generation. And you can really see kind of how you know, angled this front area here. Um, Toyota says the windshield is the steepest rake they've ever done and that gives the Prius a 0.27 drag coefficient. That's surprisingly not as slippery as the prior generation. That's with the 17-inch wheels. The 19s on my tester also do lower the drag coefficient a little bit, but it definitely gives this car a much more sophisticated appearance. Now you can see here, I also like the fact that Toyota didn't add any ugly cladding. Instead, there's this tasteful black painted wheel arch trim and you can see the limited and the XLE grades come with these attractive 19 inch wheels riding on a really skinny 195 50 R19. You can also get a 17 inch wheel with uh, hubcap covers 
or with aero covers, that's gonna get you better gas mileage. You can see the brake rotors here look pretty nice. The front wheel drive model has an 11 inch rotor and an 11 inch rear rotor. Uh, the all wheel drive gets a larger 12 inch rotor. So kind of keep that in mind. You get a bigger brake when you guys go for all wheel drive. It's got a new fully independent suspension. And uh, then you can see on the limited, you also get uh, black painted side mirrors, no LED turn signals. And then my tester also has the panoramic sunroof option. Although this is this technically doesn't open up to vent air. It just has a shade that opens up and closes to let um, some natural light into the vehicle. Now you can see here, you can really tell just how much lower this car is, and this is gonna affect the interior space. We'll talk about that later. And I also love the fact that the Prius hid the rear door handles up here in the uh, C pillar. It's also an electronic digital latch system, kind of like what they find on other Lexus vehicles. The gas filler is over here. If you guys go for the plug-in hybrid, you'll have another filler on the other side of the vehicle. And then moving around the rear, it just looks a lot more sophisticated. I mean, the styling here, the rear taillights kind of reminds you of the new Toyota Crown a bit. You've got this full length LED taillight bar. You have LED turn signals, and then it spells out Prius in the back. You've got the new Beyond Zero badge here with the hybrid electric vehicle badge. And also the Toyota badge here you can see is completely flush. There's a new LTD, which stands for limited. And then down here you can see no visible exhaust tips, but you do have some well-integrated uh, parking sensors. Now looking at the cargo area, this is where the Prius also uh, did lose a little bit compared to the prior generation. Uh, you get a max, or you get a total of 20.3 cubic feet of space. That's a reduction of around six cubic feet compared to the previous generation. Um, you can uh, fold down the cargo area here, which will expand the cargo to around 27 cubic feet, which is definitely lower versus some other traditional hatchbacks that you'll find in the segment. Underneath here, there's no spare tire. You get a lot of styrofoam and a fix a flat kit, but overall the Prius is still a practical vehicle. Just know the Toyota does offer other hybrids if you need Need more practicality and more space. So let's move on to the interior of the all new fifth generation Prius. Before we do that, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is Toyota's current uh, push button start intelligent key function. It says Prius on the back of the key. You have your usual buttons here to lock, unlock, power lift gate, which is only included on the limited trim. And then you also have a panic feature. If you guys also have access to the Toyota Connected Services app, you can also use your smartphone as a key, their digital key system, which is definitely a nice feature to have. Now, as I approach the vehicle, you can see conventional door handles. If you touch that, you can hear the vehicle has a new chime. And that's what I like about the new Prius is listen to that again. I mean, Toyota didn't have to do that, but the fact that they did put a new chime on this vehicle, a new lock and unlock chime, shows their commitment to make this vehicle just a far different car versus the prior generation. Now, opening up the door, you can see my tester has a lovely color combination with the reservoir blue and the light gray soft tex interior. This is a faux leather, but it's very soft and supple and it feels very durable. These seats are also heated and ventilated. The limited trim is the only one to get the ventilated seats. The XLE trim will have a heated seats and you have an eight-way power driver's seat with two-way lumbar support, and you also have two-person memory. I believe the limited trim is the only trim to also give you that memory function. The seats are comfortable and supportive. They look great. You can also get a black interior, but I love this light gray. It does a great job of just kind of uh, going the or showing the contrast of the interior with the two-tone look. Now, in terms of the door panels, you can see there is a soft touch injection molded plastic on this area. It actually has a slightly lighter gray tone here, padded area over here where your elbow would rest. The windows are one touch for all four and they have a nice high quality feeling window switches which are also illuminated. Down here it's hard touch plastic with some storage, uh, but that's okay. It's still a relatively nice interior as you first approach the vehicle. Now getting inside, this is where you're gonna notice the very sloping steeped front windshield because uh, you have to duck your head even for somebody my height as I get in and shut the door. The door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. And then you can see here, this interior will remind you a little bit of the BZ4X. That's not a bad place to start. However, some of you will have to get used to this iMid display. Now you can see start stop button is right here. Push that. You can hear the vehicle comes to life with the typical kind of starter motor noise. You don't have that typical startup noise because this is a hybrid. It just shows EV and then it says uh, ready in the instrument panel over here. This is a seven inch display. And then the upper trims will get the larger 12.3 inch display with their Toyota head audio multimedia head unit. It does include uh, over the air wireless over the air updates. And as you can see, it also includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Love the way this looks. The lower systems will have, or the lower trims will have an eight inch uh, touch screen instead of the 12.3 inch display. Now you can see the steering wheel also comes directly off the BZ4X. The way that Toyota has done this is you have to actually position the wheel low because if you have it too high, you can see the wheel is gonna be blocking the actual screen. But if I have it down here low, I can pretty much still see that. I can see over that 
but it takes some getting used to. You can see the steering wheel itself, no paddles on the wheel. You have controls for the uh, adjusting the screen over here where you can adjust the way this looks. You can show your trip computer information. You can also kind of um, just show move that screen to the center if you want less information. So it's a really uh, interesting looking display um, that shows a lot of useful stuff, much better versus the old Prius, which had a center display. There wasn't a display right in front of you. You have controls here for the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which is standard and includes their full suite of driver assistance, like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, lane trace assist, for example. All that is very nice. The horn. Ooh, sounds really dinky and puny. I really wish Toyota would put a meaner sounding horn in this vehicle. Uh, but then you can see the rest of the dash has a soft touch injection molded plastic. This upper portion here is hard touch plastic. A lot of plastic over here as well, just like the BZ4X. And then my tester uh, mostly has solid fit and finish. I didn't hear any squeaks and rattles, but I do notice that some of the trim pieces here uh, feel a little bit flimsy and they don't line up properly. So. Again, it kind of reminds you that Toyota Prius is still kind of on the lower end of the totem pole for their uh, vehicles in their lineup. I like how it says Prius over here. There's a nice blue colored LED light strip that goes along this part of the dash and then over the driver vent over here. It's blue in the regular Prius, red in the X or in the prime Prius, which is definitely nice. You can see you have actual hard buttons for the heated and cooled seats. You have a single zone automatic climate control. The press release when Toyota first showed it to us, uh, the media, it said dual zone, but here you can see it's only a single zone. You have two USB charging ports here. I love the little hidden storage compartment here with the hashtag hidden compartment. If I put the vehicle into reverse, my tester has a technology package, which includes a full 360 camera with top-down views. It's got front and rear parking sensors, which is nice. It even has a rear camera washer if you need to wash the washer or wash the camera lens because it got dirty. The graphic and the resolution looks good. That's part of a $1,600 option package for the tech package. This is the only trim to get it. You have some piano black plastic. This controls the CVT transmission, which it's the same electronic shifter you'll find in a lot of Toyota hybrids where you basically kick it over and then come down for drive, kick it over and go to reverse by pushing it up. And then you can also go into a B setting here um, by pushing down again and going into a B setting, which gives you braking. And then you can see there's the push to P for the park button. Your drive mode selector is here. There's four modes, custom, sport, normal, and eco. We'll try out the different modes later on during the driving scene. There's a wireless phone charging pad here, which is nice. And then a padded center console here. When you open this up, there's two more USBs. There's a total of six USBs in this vehicle. This, the storage there is a little bit shallow, uh, but it is still definitely useful. In terms of the glove compartment, you can see it is damped, but not lined with felt. It's a bin style. There's a nine speed JBL premium audio system that you can only get unlimited. It's definitely sounds good. I'm not entirely sure if it's worth the char upcharge versus the XLE, which has the eight speaker Toyota branded audio system, but it's nice to get the JBL system as well. You have an electronic digital camera rear view mirror, which there's the view without the camera. It's definitely compromised. This is a better view. Uh, my tester also has the panoramic roof. This doesn't actually open to vent air, but you can see there are two sets of uh, shades where this bar also kind of takes up a little bit of the view. Uh, you can see the headliner here is pretty low because of the lower roof. You have LED uh, map lights in this vehicle, but not but the only LED accent light is here on the dash. But overall, the interior definitely has a much more sophisticated and futuristic feel. In terms of material quality, it's average. In terms of spaciousness, uh, it, the headroom is compromised and you do have to get used to this very long dash, but it's still a very nice place to spend time. But let's go ahead and show you guys the rear seat of this vehicle. Uh, because of the stretch in the wheelbase, Toyota actually claims you have more legroom back here, about an inch and a half more legroom at just under 35 inches. However, the headroom in this vehicle has been reduced by about an inch and a half. So you're going to notice that once you get back here, you can see the materials are hard touch plastic. It's not as nice as the front seats, which is fine. It is padded over here where your elbows would rest over there on the armrest pad. But as I get in, I have to seriously duck my head. Now I'm going to show you guys, just check this out. I'm five foot seven. Yeah. I have to really cock my head over to get into this vehicle and I'm not very tall, but once I'm back here, you can see my head is not touching the roof. My, my hair gets pretty close, but for if you're over six foot, you're not gonna be able to sit back here very comfortably. But once you're back here, you can see the leg room is pretty good. There's 35 inches, just under 35, like I said. There's good foot space here. The floor is not completely flat, but you can fit three across. You can see my tester has the three level heated seats, or I'm sorry, one level heated seats. Uh, and you have two more USB ports. No vents back here. It would have been nice to see vents. You have only one storage cubby over here. Uh, and then you have an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. The seats, like I said earlier, they do fold down in a 60-40 manner so you can get into the 
uh, cargo area. And this is actually a surprisingly flat floor. You do have LED lighting here at the top. And then if you want, you can close this shade in case the sun's a little bit too much. I'm surprised it doesn't come a little further back. Um, so this just kind of lets in some nice natural light. But overall, the headroom space is really what's compromised. The legroom space is fine. Uh, but it's still, you know, relatively decent place to spend time if you guys are under six feet tall. So it's been about five months since I've been in the brand new 2023 Toyota Prius. When I first had a chance to drive this car out in California, it was a very short drive loop. So now that Toyota has loaned me this front wheel drive limited for a full week, I'm able to retest it. We can test out the fuel economy. I want to also retest the zero to 60 on my home area here on the stretch of road we always use. But as usual, guys, when I first drove this vehicle, first impressions are excellent. I mean, the dopey, slow, unrefined nature, uh, just economy car nature of the old Prius is kind of gone with this new version. It just feels futuristic. It feels modern. It feels also more upscale, which is kind of crazy. But um, let's go ahead and see what we can get because in the Corolla Cross, uh, hybrid with all-wheel drive. We got 6.9 seconds in our last run. I believe I got 7.1 as well in the front-wheel drive Prius, but I have it in sport. Let's go ahead and brake torque it. No wheel spin, but the vehicle takes off really nicely. Lots of torque. The sound isn't pleasant, but 6.96 seconds there. Wow. I mean, compare that to like 10 seconds in the old Prius and you've got basically an over three second zero to 60 improvement. I mean, this is plenty fast for most people. And what's crazy is this time could actually smoke something like a Civic Si. If you pull up next to a brand new Civic Si and the person driving it isn't the best shifter, this car could be faster theoretically, which is crazy. Even the Integra A-Spec with a manual is also slower. I haven't had a chance to retest a CVT Integra, but I also suspect it's going to be slower. And that's because of the electric motor componentry of this vehicle. It, it delivers 111 horsepower from just the electric motor on its own 150 horsepower from the gas and not to mention all that torque. Let's go ahead and try it here without brake torquing it. No wheel spin, even though this isn't the all wheel drive version, which that model gives you an extra two horsepower. God, this thing just accelerates nicely. 7.7 .7 here, and this is with it more going slightly uphill. So in the real world, you're gonna be looking in the low seven second range, zero to 60 time, which is plenty fast. I mean, you don't really need a vehicle like this to be this fast. I mean, the people who buy this car who are replacing your old Prius, you're gonna get in this and feel like you're driving a sports car. That's how fast this new Prius has become. And it's kind of crazy. It really is crazy to think at just how fast this new Prius has become. But overall, the driving dynamics of this car are just so much better. I mean, Toyota didn't need to make the Prius sportier to drive, but they certainly did. The steering in this vehicle is surprisingly quick, agile. We've got uh, independent, an independent suspension as well, although the rear is questionable as a fully independent. Uh, Toyota had some kind of engineering answer at the media drive for this. so. Um, but overall, the ride quality in the new Prius is also pretty good. The visibility in this vehicle does take a little getting used to because of the slope of the windshield is very sloped back. Um, taller folks who drive this vehicle, you're going to kind of be sitting in like this and you're going to have to look over and under the windshield uh, or the visor, the sun visor. But a shorter driver like myself, five foot seven, I can see out of this car just fine. You just have to like get used to the very long, expansive dash. This A pillar is kind of a little bit large. The view out of the side is good. The rear view is great with this rear camera mirror. If you don't have it, it's okay. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be because it doesn't have that split window anymore. Uh, but overall, the car just feels light. It feels nimble. It feels playful. It feels fun. And that's kind of what the interesting thing about this car is. <laughs> it will spin the front tires there. You put your foot down in a turn and that's where it reminds you you should have got the all-wheel drive version. And then the sound is not the most pleasant. I mean, that's the typical Toyota hybrid noise where it's kind of droning and making a lot of noise. But at least it's actually you know, providing that forward thrust that the old Prius wasn't, didn't have. I mean, before it made all that noise, but it didn't actually go forward. Now it actually does go forward with authority. It's kind of crazy to think. I'm gonna try it one more time here and see if we can consistently get 6.9. Brake torque it. Really quick off the line, it's fantastic. All right, 6.97 there, so we'll take that number. It is a fantastic time. I'm gonna get a hold of a Prius Prime at a later date, uh, later this summer, and we'll test that one out. Um, 
I'm hoping I can also get a hold of a Prius all-wheel drive and see if we can get a slightly quicker time with that vehicle. But I mean, overall, it's a fantastic car. But let's go ahead and switch the drive mode here into Eco because this is probably how most Prius drivers are going to drive. And when I drove the vehicle like a Prius driver, a typical Prius driver, what I noticed are a few things. First of all, the electric motor componentry, because it's so much more beefed up this year, you can actually get up to speed, about 30 miles an hour on just electric power alone if you're very gentle with the throttle. I mean, the uh, instrument panel here tells you exactly what power source is going to be powering the wheels, basically. Uh, and you also provide some regen braking whenever you hit the brakes. The car has a 0.91 kilowatt hour battery pack, so it's a small battery pack. Obviously, this isn't the plug-in hybrid version, but it is surprising how well this car will accelerate on EV power alone if you're gentle on the throttle. Now, of course, anytime you go near the throttle with mid-accelerate, with mid-range throttle, you're gonna wake up the gas engine. However, when you do wake up the gas engine, most people are going to wake it up in this manner. It's not as intrusive as it is at full throttle. That's what you have to keep in mind. I was being heavy on the throttle earlier to show the zero to 60 times, but most of the times you can get up to speed with just mid throttle and you hear the engine in the background, but it's not droning and groaning the way that it was earlier at full throttle accelerations. I mean, just cruising along. Uh, I don't hear much in terms of road noise. Surprisingly, I hear a little bit of wind noise, which shocking to me, uh, but it kind of reminds you that the Prius isn't a luxury vehicle. Um, Toyota probably didn't put as much sound deadening as they could have, because uh, that would have added increased the weight, increased the cost of the vehicle. The seats also, the soft tax, the gray soft tax in this limited, really comfortable. Uh, they have a nice, they have a good amount of lateral support as well, but I just feel like the cushioning is very soft. The heated and cooled seats also work pretty well. Um, the overall feel of the car is just really nice. Now, for those of you who are curious as well with the fuel efficiency, um, not sure how the radio turned on there. I must have accidentally hit a button, the mode button there. The fuel efficiency of this car have, has been excellent. Now, in my week's worth of testing uh, in city driving, I was able to average around 55 miles to the gallon. That's better than the 52 that Toyota rates it at. Now, on the highway, it did drop to about 46 MPG. Remember, hybrids like this, they tend to do better in stop-and-go traffic, which is what probably most of you are going to be driving in if you you know, drive this vehicle in the city, you live in an urban environment, that's where hybrids tend to do well. Uh, on a full tank, this was showing a little over 500 miles of range. Now, the EPA says you should be doing around 588 miles if you're you know, able to get the 52 MPG combined that they're saying. You've got an 11 and a half gallon gas tank. That's amazing. I mean, you're going to be making EV drivers a green with envy uh, with the range of this vehicle because it's, it's pretty much double the range in the real world of an electric vehicle, a fully electric vehicle. Um, so that's kind of the beauty about the Prius is you have, you know, this futuristic premium looking and feeling car finally. It may not have the most interior space in the segment anymore, but Toyota gladly will sell you a Camry hybrid, a RAV4 hybrid, a Corolla Cross hybrid if you need more space. But as a daily driver, you no longer have to view the, the Prius as a penalty box or this ugly clown car. You finally have a sleek, sophisticated, dare I say sexy car that's plenty quick in terms of acceleration, plenty efficient, actually way beyond the efficiency that I expected uh, considering you know, all the technology that this car has. And when you drive the car just normally like this, it's a really refined vehicle that is going to surely surprise a lot of people. The Prius is now cool. That's basically what Toyota has done here. They did have to sacrifice something in terms of practicality, but I'd say with what you've gained here, it is definitely a worthy sacrifice. So after spending a full week with the all new fifth generation 2023 Toyota Prius, I have to say, when I first drove this car, I was very impressed with the overall package. And after living with it for a full week, that has pretty much solidified my first impressions of this vehicle. The Prius is definitely a more sophisticated, more desirable, and much more cool car, especially when you look at all of the improvements that Toyota has made here. Zero to 60 in just under seven seconds for the front wheel drive version is very fast, especially for a vehicle in this caliber that also delivers over 50 MPG. MPG in my real world testing. So again, the combination of quick acceleration and excellent fuel efficiency makes the Prius just a desirable, desirable vehicle in that regard. In terms of the interior, the tech is also much improved. I love the 12.3 inch display with the latest Toyota audio multimedia interface. I also got used to the way the driving position is in this car, at least for somebody my height, where you have to have the steering wheel low, you have that iMid display that's pretty high up in the dash, which kind of functions almost like a heads up display. In terms of the headroom, it's definitely less, but for somebody my height, 
if you're over, if you're under five foot nine or under five foot 10, it should be fine for you. I do wish that the glass sunroof did open up. The rear seat headroom is compromised. So if you guys regularly put tall people in the back seat, you're gonna wanna go to a Camry, a RAV4 hybrid or Corolla Cross hybrid. But again, Toyota has those different options should you need a vehicle with slightly more space. In terms of gripes, I really had very little. I mean, this car is so good it's surprising to me how I found little gripes other than the fact that the interior is smaller. But again, there's so many other options in Toyota's lineup if you need more space. If you guys are looking to get your hands on this vehicle, what's it gonna cost you? Well, the Prius starts at around $27,500 plus destination. It is around $2,400 more versus the prior generation, which I think is a worthy increase considering all the new technology and sophistication and performance this car gives you. If you guys wanna go to an XLE trim, it's gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars more. The all-wheel drive optional be $1,500 more. This limited starts at around $34,000. And that's this is the trim you want, if you're, you're gonna wanna get if you want that power lift gate, you want the heated and cooled seats, you want the JBL premium sound system, you want the full 360 camera, you want the heated rear seats, lots of tech in this car. And it's rolled into the limited grade. My tester with that advanced technology package and the heated rear seats comes in with destination charge at just over 37,000, about 37.5, which is a good amount of money, but I also think it's a fair amount of money considering all the tech this car gives you for the price. Now, in that price category, you could also look at cars, mid-size cars like a Toyota Camry hybrid, a Honda Accord hybrid, a Mazda 3, for example. You can also look at a Subaru Crosstrek, for example, but Toyota definitely offers the fuel efficiency advantage. No other vehicle in this space around this price tag gets the same kind of fuel efficiency that the Prius gives you, and it wraps it in a sophisticated, sexy looking car that is definitely much more cool versus the prior generation. So that's kind of where Toyota offers uh, something interesting and unique in the class. And don't forget, there's also a plus plug-in hybrid for those of you who want to go up to 44 miles on electric only range and get the most powerful Prius with an extra 20-ish horsepower versus the model that I'm showing you here. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Toyota Prius. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.